Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we'll be exploring the very exciting new curvature tool, which has recently been added to Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud, and we'll use the curvature tool to draw this fleur-de-lis. First, I'd like to take a look at the curvature tool, because it can be used both to modify existing shapes and to draw new shapes. And if we look at this polygon here, and I choose the curvature tool, which is right under the pen tool, looks like the pen tool, but with a little squiggly. Uh, that asterisk indicates that it's going to draw a new path, and when I mouse over this existing path, it gives me a plus, and that means it's going to add a point to that path. So as I click and drag up, it converts that straight path into a curve, and you see I can move it around and uh, modify the path as I go. And of course it can be used to pull the curve in any direction. So that's uh, actually a pretty interesting capability. And the curvature tool can also be used to draw new paths. And one thing that's very important to understand, you just click, you don't click and drag, just click. Looks like nothing's happening, but when I click again, I see a straight line, and then when I move my mouse, the curvature tool starts creating curves. And if I move the mouse in a kind of an ellipse-like direction, it'll try to create an ellipse. And if I move it down like this, it'll try to create a circle. And if I hold the shift key, it'll try and constrain to a circle. Uh, the thing to understand is that all of these lines um, stay connected. And you can see that as I move this mouse, it's affecting all of the previously created lines. And when I go up here to connect it, you can see that it's trying to create a regular smooth shape. And this can be very valuable if you're looking for that kind of effect. So let's, uh, I found a template to kind of guide us here. Choose your curvature tool. And uh, probably a good idea to draw a, a guideline here uh, to give you a center line. We just click here and then click here. You'll see I get a straight line, but as I drag down, it creates that curve. Now as I pull out in the other direction, Notice the curvature tool is editing that previous line. Here I'm going to hold down my Option or my Alt key to create a corner. And just a sharp click here. Now I want to close this uh, shape. So going to my Direct Selection tool, my white arrow, if I just select those two points. My Align tools should come uh, up here. Just go to Horizontal Align Center, and then Object, Path, Join, or Command-J. So now I, I have my first half of my central shape drawn. Back to the Curvature tool, and this curve will be a little bit more complex. And you'll notice that as I draw, the curvature tool is trying to kind of take care of me and keep my curves graceful. Here I want a corner, so Option or Alt key. And back down and around. Here I can see that little circle next to my pen tool indicates that the shape is going to close, which is great. That's exactly what I want. So with my direct selection tool, I can just do a little tiny bit of editing here and uh, just change my shape a little bit. But the curvature tool has done a pretty good job for me. Uh, what I want to do is I actually want to make a separate shape to, um, you can kind of look back at our example here. 
uh, I want to be able to paint these different parts of the shape a different color. So I'm going to have to make a separate shape here. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. It's not very difficult. Um, as I go to my path here, I open up my layer that I'm drawing on. And I choose this path. I'm going to duplicate that path and turn off the bottom copy. So now I have two copies of that path and I can use one of them uh, to create this extra shadow shape. So I'm going to, in my layers panel, lock that path so that I can't mess it up. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Go to my curvature tool. And I'm going to start a little bit out here because I want to be able to delete this line when I'm done and I don't need it anymore. Just let the curvature tool keep my curves graceful here. Once again, going a little further than I need. So now I need to unlock that. Um, path so I can select it. Select both paths and now I get to use the Shape Builder tool which is just really my super favorite new tool. How the Shape Builder tool works is it can combine shapes or it can use shapes uh, as trim shapes. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I have these two circles here, ellipses, and I select them both and go to my Shape Builder if I just click and drag across, it'll combine them. But if I hold down my Option or my Alt key, it uses that smaller shape as a trim shape. And that's the way we're going to be using it right now. So just make sure that's unlocked now so that I uh, select both with my Selection tool, Shape Builder, Option or Alt key, and now click and drag. And because I was holding down my Option or my Alt key, it, uh, it deleted. Now I want to get rid of that line, which is still there. So that's why I left it kind of sticking out, so I could easily get rid of it. Just hit the Delete key there. I selected and hit the Delete key. And uh, now I'm going to turn back on that shape. And I'm ready to reflect and complete my fleur de -lis. Select your shapes, choose the Reflect tool, Option or Alt key, and you have to click exactly on the center there. Axis vertical, copy. Looks like my template wasn't perfectly symmetrical. That's not unusual, so I'll turn it off. And now let's start to uh, add fills to our shapes. You can see I have this nice little collection of gold swatches here, and where I got those was from the swatches panel, where there's a nice collection of metal swatches here. All you have to do is click on these, and they'll appear in your swatches panel, so that's good. So uh, let's start. Choosing this bottom one here. Just going to choose that shape. I'll go with a darker color here, lighter, lighter, darker, darker, lighter. Looks pretty good. Of course, the black strokes don't look any good, so let's get rid of those right away. Makes it a lot nicer. Now we just need the little binder in the middle. So turn my template back on so I can make sure I place it correctly. And just go to my rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle. Make sure it's centered. I can modify a little with my curvature tool. I want that little curve out there, and out there, 
I'm going to pull this in just a little. Great. Now let's give it a stroke with that darker color. And a couple more points there. Checking my stroke panel with a rounded look there. And there we are. There's our fleur de lis. A dark background will show the drama of the colors. And I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll subscribe or leave some comments in my comment section. Thank you for watching.